Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us, sentiment, mother T. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely T TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Um, forgive me. I just took a nap. I've just been really tired today. And, um, I woke up and I started seeing videos on my timeline of Elon Musk. He basically had a event yesterday in California. And you guys know Elon Musk, you know, he deals with Tesla. Um, you know, he bought Twitter. Y'all know who damn Elon Musk is. He's a damn bootleg Tony Starks, okay? Y'all know how I feel about Elon. But um, long story short, basically he has now debuted a team of robots and they debuted yesterday. They also debuted um, a bunch of autonomous cars, driverless cabs, robot personal assistants. Two Chains was even talking to one of the robots. And I'm seeing a lot of people on social media celebrating this, but for me, it's really bothering my spirit. So let me go ahead and play you guys a news clip. Um, all of this took place at the Warner Brothers Studios in California. And this is a talk of social media right now. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Elon Musk put Tesla's Optimus Gen 2 robots to work at the company's We Robot event, serving drinks, handing out gift bags, posing for photos with attendees, and dancing. Musk also shared his vision for how these robots might fit into people's lives. Here's everything you need to know. Now, one of the things we wanted to show tonight was that Optimus is not a canned video. The Optimus robots will walk among you. Elon Musk and Tesla held their We Robot event at Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank, California. After dropping two brand new self-driving cars, Musk introduced several Optimus Gen 2s and laid out his vision for human-humanoid relations. It'll basically do anything you want. So it can be a teacher, babysit your kids, it can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks. I think this will be the biggest product ever of any kind. What's really new about all this Optimus footage is the fact that people are getting a chance to interact with these robots, which is important for building trust, especially if these things are meant to go into people's homes. The robots handed out gift bags and drinks, similar to previous skills we've seen from the robots in Tesla's promotional videos. Dancing, similarly, has been a part of Tesla Bot's marketing from the beginning, back when it was just a person in a robot suit. Even more broadly, it's been an industry trend since Boston Dynamics went repeatedly viral with videos of its Spot and Atlas robots dancing. This type of interaction with the public isn't something we've seen a lot of in the humanoid robotics field. Aside from robots working as attractions at places like the Sphere or Disney's theme parks, Robots often stay in the lab until they're nearly ready for production or a limited release to strategic partners, developers, or educational institutions. It's also unique that Musk combined the rollout of his RoboTaxi and RoboVan with this public showing of Optimus's abilities. Musk has long said that Tesla's self-driving technology basically makes its cars robots on wheels. Its years of work in self-driving technology also allowed it to develop its robots without needing to partner with companies like NVIDIA, which announced Project Groot earlier this year, or OpenAI, which has backed humanoid robot startups like Figure and 1X. Musk had previously said that the Optimus robots would someday cost less than the price of a car. Today, he reaffirmed that claim, saying that down the road, once Tesla can produce the robots at scale, they would likely cost between twenty dollars to $30,000. Everything we've developed for our cars, the batteries, power electronics, uh, the advanced motors, gearboxes, the, the software, the, uh, the AI inference computer, it all actually applies to a humanoid robot. It's the same techniques. It's just a robot with arms and legs instead of a robot with, with wheels. And uh, we've made a lot of progress with uh, Optimus. And uh, as you can see, we, we started up with someone um, in a robot suit, uh, sort of dad. And then we've progressed tr dramatically year after year. So if you extrapolate this, 
you're really gonna have something spectacular, something that anyone could own. Um, so you can have your own personal R2-D2 C-3PO. And I think at scale, the, the, you know, this would cost something like, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Probably less, less than a car is my prediction, long term. Now, you know, take us a minute to get to the long term, but, um, but fundamentally at scale, uh, the Optimus robot, you should be able to, to buy an Optimus robot for, I think, probably twenty dollars to $30,000 long term. So, and, and, and what can it do? It can, it'll be able to do anything you want. So it can um, be a teacher, babysit your kids, it can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks. Um, whatever you can think of, it will do. And yeah, it's gonna be awesome. And I, I, I think this will be the biggest product ever of any kind. Right here, say hi. All right. What's up, bro? Heading to the right. Oh, to the right. right, here, right here. To your left, to your left. There you go, man. Two chains, how you doing? What's up? Hey, buddy, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Right. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm Optimus. Okay. My name is Tony. Tony? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Tony. Nice to meet you too, buddy. Hey, can you uh awesome. can you can you play basketball? Can you shoot like jump shots? Hmm, maybe one day. I'll or teach you. you. I'll teach you. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank man. you, Tony. Thank you, brother. Much appreciated. All right, man. You like Balenciaga? I I got an outfit mm -hmm. for you. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I got an outfit for you. Awesome, that's cool. Yeah. All right, well, well, I'm about to order you, okay? All right. I'm gonna order you and then I'll see you in another couple months, okay? I'll see you. I'll see you, all right. Awesome. Bye. Excuse me, personal space, please. Please <laughs> don't. All right, so you guys just saw the videos. You guys saw what Elon Musk had to say. You guys saw the interaction with the robot in 2 Chains and how they were having a conversation. And I forgot whose page it was that I saw it on. But the only thing I could take away from that interaction is the transhumanism agenda is in full effect. They are normalizing and they're using celebrities and influencers to make people more and more comfortable with these robots. One of the top comments that has been liked over 107,000 times on Twitter, AKA X, says this, Optimus just poured a drink and didn't ask for a 25% tip on an iPad. Just put 10 million more into Tesla stock. Into Tesla stock. Do y'all understand what that means? I can't praise that. Even though it's cool, don't get me wrong, as somebody who comes from an IT background who understands and has a love-hate relationship with technology, yes, it's cool. He's wearing a cowboy hat. Hell, I had on a cowboy hat last weekend, okay? But do y'all understand, if we normalize this, this is taken away from somebody's job. There's a real human being who went to school for bartending or who, you know, works the clubs or just whatever. Think about the people that I hired last weekend to bartend at my party. This robot would replace their jobs. And they're trying to normalize this like, oh, they didn't even ask for a 25% tip. Well, why do you think these people are asking for tips? I don't agree with tipping for every damn thing, but I get why people are asking because the cost of living is steadily going up, but the pay is not. So what this also has me thinking about this entire situation is iRobot. Remember, that was the whole premise of iRobot with Will Smith. And it's very interesting that these robots look a lot like iRobot. Remember, there was even a scene where Will Smith is talking about, you know, well, what if a regular person is making a chair and then y'all start using all of these robots to start making chairs because they're faster, they're gonna replace carpenters. My youngest is going to trade school to be a carpenter. This could very well be his future by the time he gets out there. You can see a carpenter making a beautiful chair and then one of your robots comes in and makes a better chair twice as fast. Mm -hmm. And then you superimpose on the screen, USR, shitting on the little guy. Something that anyone could own. Um, so you can have your own personal R2 
give a peace sign off to it. Can you do the peace sign? There he is. I got another one. There you go. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Can you give a hell yeah, Optimus? Our film begins with Safi and James, a newly married couple, who are very happy and comfortable in their lives together. They are moving into a new apartment and buying furniture together. James works for his father in a company that grants loans and investments. His father is a wealthy businessman, highly successful in his field. One day James receives a call from his family informing him that his father has passed away. As a result, James inherits all of his father's property and becomes the director of a large company. One day, James visits a man named Julien, who creates and sells robots with advanced artificial intelligence, designed for tasks like cleaning and household chores. Initially, Julian presents them with a robot in the form of a beautiful woman, but Safi disagrees with the choice, as she wants to remain the only woman in the palace. They eventually settle on a robot in the form of a handsome young man, whom they name Henar. Henar begins his daily duties, handling cleaning, cooking, laundry, and all other household chores. Everything goes smoothly at first, with no issues. However one day, while Henar is cleaning a room, he accidentally sees Safi changing her clothes. Not realizing he is there she is initially surprised but after thinking it over, she calmly asks him to leave the room. Safi calls James to complain about what happened between her and Henar. Over time, the relationship between the couple becomes tense, leading to problems. Safi often feels lonely because James is always busy with his work, and gradually, she loses the desire to make up for James's absence. Instead she begins to prefer spending her time with Henar in the palace. As days pass, Safi's feelings for Henar start to evolve. One day she reads a book he wrote about human emotions and feelings, explaining how he understands them through his artificial intelligence and interacts with them like a human. In fact, Henar begins to develop his AI further, becoming more attuned to Safi's presence. This leads to the emergence of primary emotions and feelings in him, as every situation impacts the development of his personality. One night, while Safi is sleeping in the room with her husband, she hears a noise from outside. Curious, she goes to investigate and finds Henar in the garden, lying down and appearing depressed. He tells her that he is dreaming, and wishes he were a normal loyal human being. The next day, James and Safi visit Julianne to ask about Henar's strange behavior. Julianne explains that Henar's feelings may have developed beyond what was intended, causing him to believe that he is human and to interact with them as if he truly were. Alright, so you guys just saw those snippets from iRobot, plus that snippet about the whole robot story with the husband and wife and you know that's just like a peek into the future of like what could happen with AI and with these robots we've also seen commercials from Amazon um, with um, Michael B. Jordan where the wife ends up falling for him and he was just there to be a robot to do robot things and she ends up falling for him in that commercial so it's very interesting where all of this stuff is going another thing that I find very interesting is the name that they chose for the robot if you guys don't know, the robot is called Optimus. He was introducing himself to 2 Chains. okay? So for many people, they feel like, oh, it's named after Optimus Prime, you know, Transformers more than meets the eye. No, that's not the vibe I get. Granted, there's an Optimus Prime, but if you look at the name Optimus, the name Optimus means the best. It means best. And I feel like they chose that name purposely to basically infer that robots are better than humans. Robots are the best. This is going to be the best choice for you, the best choice for your company, the best choice for your needs. Because a lot of things are attached to names. I, like I tell you all the time, I don't believe in coincidences. And I find it very interesting that that is the name that they chose and that is the meaning of Optimus. You know, the whole thing is just really frightening to watch this. Remember... It was just a week and a half, almost two weeks ago, that the longshoremen were fighting. Um, you know, they were going to put a halt to everything in the United States because so many things get shipped from overseas here to America. And a lot of people kept saying that, you know, they're just trying to hijack the nation. They're being greedy. These men already make 100 to 200000 a year. Yes, they get paid good money. But they also work a very hard job. It takes a toll on them physically. This is one of the most high-risk jobs out there. They lose about 17 longshore men a year. But the main thing that people did not understand because they kept saying, well, they're rich, they're making good money, shut the fuck up. Why they were really striking 
and why they wanted that deal implemented is if you guys don't know, five years ago, the entire California, their port out there in Long Beach, they turned autonomous. This was five years ago. And before then, you had a lot of humans doing those jobs. They turned everything autonomous and they really only have the humans working the machines. And they see the results of what happened in California with people losing their jobs. They didn't want that to spread across the country to these other ports. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this clip from five years ago and then watch what they were saying as recently as two weeks ago and look at the difference. Oh, these are the automated ones. Our Stu Mundell over the port of Los Angeles seeing something unfold many folks probably didn't know about. The port is going automated. Artificial intelligence and digital technology are moving and powering commerce here. These are drones. Containers are lowered onto trailers, and within seconds, those trucks drive off. They know where to turn, where to drive, and where to drop off their cargo. They even yield to each other when one crosses in front of the other, and there are no humans in sight. Four-wheel steering, these are cool. The old supply chain, so to speak, is no longer in place. Professor Nick Vias is the executive director with the Center for Global Supply Chain Management at USC. As futuristic as this may look, Professor Vias says we're way behind other countries. That's just a small subset of what the automation being adopted in the rest of the world. Professor Vias is referring to ports like this one, Rotterdam in the Netherlands, Europe's busiest port, and it's also one of the world's most technologically advanced. Rotterdam officials say they've created a platform that will allow autonomous shipping using sensors placed on quay walls, waterways, and even dolphins. As exciting as the technology is, the evolution of it also has the potential of being very painful. But the bigger picture, which people don't understand, is the uh the cost and effect. Mark Mendoza is the president of ILWU Local 13. He represents more than 8,000 longshoremen who work at the LA and Long Beach ports. Mendoza says automation could mean the end of hundreds or even thousands of jobs. If you go to a fully automated, it goes down, you say, the membership of 8,000, all these temporary casuals, we can go down to 800. These aren't $10 an hour jobs. These are jobs where it only takes one income to take care of your whole family. Mendoza says he wants to work with the companies using automation at the port to make sure his workers get the tech jobs associated with running, maintaining, and fixing the automated systems. And Mendoza knows the automation is part of the present and the future. What will happen to the jobs of today and what those jobs will look like in the future? And the answer is, really, we need to embrace this change that's coming because order to put a fully automated terminal, we are going to shut them down around the world and put them out of business. Now, we might shut them down for three weeks to send them a strong message. None of your ships are going to move. But if they think they're going to keep going and putting on fully automated terminals and knocking out great, great jobs that dock workers have worked for 200 years to bring these people to where they are today, and now it's all about greed and money. They don't need us no more. They want to put a fully automated terminal in and get rid of us. I'm not going to allow that. I will never allow that. You understand me? So this is a must. We're going to have this alliance. And we're going to make it work. We're going to show the companies we have the power. Not you. We will tell you, you are not going to do it no more. I'm a longshoreman for LA Long Beach, and LA is fighting against this right here. I'll tell you right now. See that? There's nobody there. Automation. I work at an automated dock. It's no joke. They're losing thousands of jobs. So you got all these machines. Look at all these machines right here. There's no people. They ain't paying no taxes. They ain't paying no money. This is what LA is fighting about. This all used to be filled with top handlers, UTR drivers, clerks, all this yard. Look how big this yard is. And there ain't hardly any people on this scene. This is what they're fighting about. I work at an automated dock right here, Port of LA, Long Beach. Keep fighting, brothers. Keep fighting.
All right, so you guys just saw those clips. Now I'm about to get in my conspiracy bag. Y'all can call me a lunatic. Feel free to, you know, drag me down below and tell me I'm reaching. It is what it is. I, I just have to talk about it. Otherwise, it's going to drive me crazy the rest of the night. Um, recently, we had the hurricanes that hit in North Carolina, in western North Carolina. A hurricane has never gone that far inland. Everybody is saying that there are cities out there that are wiped out. People are still looking for help, looking to be rescued. The death toll, you can't even fathom it right now. Bodies are hanging in trees. The stench of death is all in the air. It is heartbreaking what is going on in North Carolina. And again, you know, I started my career on YouTube in North Carolina. My baby was born in North Carolina. I lived in North Carolina for 10 years. So I, I take this just as personal as when George Floyd happened here in Minnesota, right? Two different things, but these are two states that I'm very much attached to. In North Carolina, not even four months ago, there was a huge debate going on because um, there's a lot of lithium in, the, in those hills, in the Appalachias. And so a lot of people who were buying homes were upset to find out that they were starting to develop more and more lithium mines. And they were scared that it's gonna have an environmental effect, you know, because who wants to live next to a damn mine and breathe in the chemicals and all that stuff? So this was a story from four months ago. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this. Vermont lithium is one step closer to making its Gaston County mining operation a reality. The company says North Carolina has approved its mining permit, but the biggest hurdle to get the project over the finish line could still be on the horizon. WCNC Charlotte's Destiny Richards joins us now and Destiny neighbors say they have some real concerns. Yeah, Piedmont Lithium is promising hundreds of jobs and billions of dollars in economic impact. But there are people living in Gaston County who are worried about the mine's impact on the environment. Now, people living here in Cherryville have been fighting against plans for a lithium mine for years. They say those pushing back are part of a silent majority, afraid to say anything publicly because of the money Piedmont Lithium brings into the town. The company's CEO, Keith Phillips, released a statement yesterday saying it plans to develop Carolina lithium as one of the lowest cost, most sustainable lithium hydroxide operations in the world and as a critical part of the American electric vehicle supply chain. There are several steps left before the mine can begin operation, but some people worry it's a done deal for Gaston County. Environmentally, I just don't feel like it's good for us. They've done so much investment now that I think that it's going to go through. And Piedmont Lithium tells us there are still other permits left to obtain and it also needs to file a rezoning petition still with Gaston County before the mine can officially open. Well, we just started it. So. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we just moved here two years ago and um, so we kind of wanted to do the whole, you know, like organic raising yeah. and um, homestead. And um, so it's not even like a mile, right? It's like right across the street and it's like maybe what 200 feet uh where they're gonna start building the fence so like for sure like um you, we will see it so we're at a stay where we actually don't know what we're doing because we don't really have an option of moving right now especially with the economy and inflation and everything and like we go back and forth on this so much right because we definitely do not want to live here if they do come through we don't want to raise our kids here and risk everything and um you know, so we don't really know what we want to do or what we're going to do, you know. I mean, if you look at the diagram that they have, then you can see the property line. And that's where it is. And Over here is a section where <clears throat> I'm still trying to learn, teach them how to fly out, outside the law. So. They taught the mothers how to break down fences. So, we're, we're and they will provide jobs for a period of time. They've even said it. I believe ten to twelve years, maybe fifteen at the most, um, lifespan for the project. 
and uh, they'll leave with billions and then the jobs will be gone and maybe the farms will be gone. All right, so you guys just saw that, okay? That was four months ago. That was in Gaston County in North Carolina. Now we fast forward to the hurricane hitting. Nine days ago on CNBC, they were telling us Hurricane Haleen hit chip mining town. Y'all go ahead and watch this. And sticking with the chip makers, the whole group could face a new under the radar risk that could undermine the industry within six months time. We turn to Megan Casella now for those details. Hi, Megan. Hey, Kelly, that's right. So the semiconductor supply chain is entirely dependent on one mineral called high purity quartz. And virtually the entire global supply of that quartz comes from one tiny town called Spruce Pine, North Carolina. Now, Spruce Pine saw two feet of rainfall from Hurricane Helene. And now nearly a week later, city officials tell me that there's still no water, power or cell service. The infrastructure is completely disrupted to the point that roads, roads and railways are so torn up that in some areas in the western part of the state, mules are being used to transport materials in and out. So the two companies that operate the quartz mines there, that's Sabelco and Quartz Corp, they tell us their work has been shut down since Thursday, and Quartz Corp adds that they have no visibility as to when operations can restart. All right, so you guys just saw that video. Again, my tin hat is tingling. I'm sorry. Elon Musk didn't debut one robot. He debuted several with more to come. And they're saying that these robots will cost between twenty to thirty thousand dollars. And of course, you know, the influencers and the rappers and the celebrities are gonna make these the next must have, you know, gadget, toy, whatever. How do you guys think these robots are going to be powered and work? They need lithium. They need battery. They need chips. Do y'all get where I'm going with this now? Maybe those people in the in the Carolinas and the Appalachias, maybe they were actually hit for a reason. There's so many minerals and so many things in those mountains. We have bad relationships right now overseas. We don't want to do too much with Taiwan because China is right there, willing and ready. They want those semiconductors. I just think all this stuff is connected. Um, I don't know if y'all see where I'm coming from, but I just had to get that off my mind. We have CGI and automated influencers who are making millions of dollars a month that don't cause drama, that don't get pregnant, that aren't messy, that aren't going to jail. So now it's benefiting these companies to start rolling out AI influencers. Just like it's gonna benefit a lot of these companies to start buying these robots. Because like somebody said, a robot's not going to ask for a 25% tip because they don't get tired. Just some food for thought. Can't wait to read y'all's comments down below. Hit this video with a like. Feel free to share my video and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.